Today I'm out in the shop troubleshooting the four-wheel drive automatic hub engagement and disengagement. Then I'm going to talk about how to bypass the solenoid so that you can determine if your four-wheel drive is working and how to continue if you want your hubs engaged or if you want your hubs disengaged when the solenoid is not working. I'm going to be working on my 2005 F-150 Lariat which is the 2004 through 2008 generation F-150. But this information will be helpful for any four-wheel drive equipped 1997 through 2018 Ford F-150 or 2006 through 2008 Mark LT. The 1997 through 2018 Expedition and the 1998 through 2018 Navigator, 1995 through 1996 Explorer, the 1997 through 1999 non Super Duty F 250, and all of the 2011 through 2018 Super Duty trucks F 250, F 350, F 450, and the F 550 trucks. Now, I have many other videos showing general automotive work, modifications, and tips. If you find this video helpful, consider subscribing and watching the other videos. To subscribe, just click the Styles Automotive icon in the lower right of the screen. To get started, we're going to talk about the four-wheel drive operation. You can see that my selector lever is in too high. Four-wheel drive supplies power to all four wheels. Four-wheel drive should not be operated on dry pavement. Driveline damage may occur. There are four trucks that I named earlier that don't have the automatic electronic shift. They have a shift on the floor, the manual shifter, but this also applies to those trucks because they also have the automatic hubs. So I'm going to be talking about my automatic shift, but you're just going to shift yours with the shift lever. If, you, if yours is equipped. Too high supplies power to the rear wheels only, used for street and highway driving, provides optimal smoothness and fuel economy at high speeds. The four high is used for extra traction, su such as snowy conditions, icy roads, off-road conditions, and it's not intended for dry pavement, like I said earlier. Then the four low uses extra low gearing to provide maximum power to all four wheels at reduced speeds. And that's intended for off-road applications, such as sand, steep grades, pulling heavy loads. Um, and then four low will not engage while the vehicle is moving. So that's a non-synchronized transfer case. So it's synchronized into four high, but it's not synchronized into four low. So you need to stop to uh, shift into four low. And I can go into that in a little more detail in just a second. To troubleshoot the four wheel drive system, you need to have an understanding of how it works. So let me give you a, a quick run through. When you're in too high here on the automatic selector and you turn the key on, it doesn't matter if what position the selector's in, but you see up here on the instrument cluster that you have the four low and then the four high lights illuminate as do all the dash lights when you turn the key on. So when you turn the key on and you're in too high, the hub solenoid energizes, power goes to the solenoid, energizing the solenoid, allowing vacuum to go to the hubs to pull the hubs out. So when the vehicle is resting, there's no vacuum and the hub springs allow the hubs to pull themselves in. So they're locked in. So when you turn the key on, start the engine, it energizes the solenoid, allowing vacuum to go to the hubs, pulling the hubs out and pulling it into two wheel drive. That's not the case if the selector is not in two-wheel drive. To go to four high, you can do that at any speed up to 55 miles an hour. If it's below 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 
Ford recommends that you slow down to 45. But if your hubs are old like mine are, it's better to slow down to like 30 or below to, to go into four high. Allows the hubs to engage easier. Uh, hubs make some noise and the motor for the transfer case also makes some noise when you change it. I don't know if you heard the audible click there, but I can hear it. Now if the cap if the camera will capture it or not. But that's the transfer case actuator turning, moving to clock to go to the four high position. And once it's in four high, once it's into that four high gear, notice the four high light illuminates. So that light proves that it's in gear in the transfer case, but there's no indication of whether the hub's pulled in or not. So now the the four wheel drive actuator de-energized, power went away from it so that the hubs could get uh, no vacuum and the springs and the automatic hubs will allow the hubs to be pulled in and locked in. So to go into four low, you need to stop the vehicle. You need to be able to stop, shift into neutral or push the clutch in if you have a manual transmission, select four low, the actuator will um, actuate. So now my, my truck's not running. So, and I'm not in, I'm not, I'm in park right now and I'm on a hill. So it won't allow it to, to move, but it's non-synchronized. So you need to be stopped in neutral. And sometimes it helps to shift into reverse, keep your foot on the brake and then shift into drive, keeping your foot on the brake, don't move the vehicle. and then it'll uh, allow that unsynchronized transfer case to pull into four low and then you'll see the light. But wait for the light to illuminate here in four low and then you'll know that you're in gear. And of course, same thing with four high, the hubs will automatically be pulled in or stay pulled in from four high to four low. Your four wheel drive automatic hub Actuation solenoid is located here behind the batteries on the right side or the passenger side of the vehicle beside the PCM. You can see that this one is shielded. It's got the cover on it. So this is a new model. The original equipment was this one. It's just on a plate so water could infiltrate the vent here and get inside it and cause it to fail. It simply has one electrical connector here and then a molded connector for the vacuum one piece that connects to both the inlet and the outlet and then connects to the source vacuum and then out to the hubs. To tell if the solenoid is working properly you can just actuate the switch on the inside and or have a buddy do it. Go ahead buddy. And you can tell with your finger on it you can feel it click. I don't know if you can hear it. Yep, you can hear it click. That's okay, buddy, stop. Okay. For mine, you could hear the audible click of this solenoid, but you also could hear the actuator down on the transfer case. And that's from under the hood, you could hear that. If you can hear it and you want to get under the truck to hear it, make sure you trust your buddy. So if your name is Daryl and your brother's name is Daryl, use extreme caution if you're getting under the truck because you have to have the key on. Notice I had the engine off. So that eliminates some of the danger of being underneath the truck. However, um, use extreme caution if somebody's in the driver's seat and you're getting under the truck. Hopefully you don't have to do that, but you, like on my truck, you could hear it. And my helper was a four-year-old, so it's something even a four-year-old can do. So again, the operation of this solenoid vacuum pulls the front axle hubs out of drive and into freewheel. No vacuum allows the springs in the front axle hubs to engage the hubs into four-wheel drive. To manually engage the hubs for the four-wheel drive, unplug the vacuum connection at this solenoid it's down under here. Since I have two batteries in my truck, it's hard to see, but it's a molded connector down in here. 
if you remove that connector, it will manually go into four wheel drive. Your hubs will be pulled in by the springs because you'll be removing the, the vacuum from the hubs. A word of caution, you need to plug or put a stopper in that unplugged vacuum connector. It would be like having a vacuum leak, which may cause the engine runnability problems and you don't want to get dirt into the engine while the connector is unplugged. So if you're planning on bypassing this, make sure you have some way a small bolt, like a quarter inch, five sixteenths or eight millimeter bolt to put in that, into that connection so that it doesn't leak. To manually engage the hubs, you need a jumper hose to go from the two ports on that vacuum connector. This will allow vacuum to reach the hubs and pull them out or disengage them. So if you're in two wheel drive and your hubs are engaged, that's gonna cause uh, a poor mileage condition. It's gonna cause your front axle assembly to turn. And uh, so you have all that parasitic loss from the, the workload that's on that front axle assembly. So you got all that drag so it's going to cause poor gas mileage and it's going to cause all that wear on the front end. So ideally you don't really want to run it down the interstate at 80 miles an hour with your front hubs engaged. So that might be an instance where you need to bypass this if this solenoid isn't working properly. But you need a, a little vacuum jumper to be able to do that. Where this solenoid is located you can see Right here in the cowl area, water can come off the windshield and come down into this cowl area and run right onto that solenoid. So back when the solenoid didn't have the cover on it, water could run right onto the solenoid and it's vented here at the top. It's got a little movable vent and the solenoid could become wet, of course freeze and thaw in the winter time and ruin the solenoid and cause it to stop working properly. So the replacement solenoids, like the one I have in my truck, come with a cover on it. So, and I've got it upside down. So vacuum connection on the bottom, electrical connection on the top. So it's got a cover on it, a housing, plastic cover, to keep the water off the solenoid will greatly increase its service life and when you install this electrical connector make sure you use a generous amount of dielectric grease to keep the water out of that electrical connection. One other note to have 100% confidence that the hubs are engaged or disengaged you can lift the front of the truck with the front tires off the ground spin one tire and look to see if the half shafts turn. If it turns the hub is engaged. If it does not turn, then the hub is disengaged and then repeat for the other side of the truck. Now that concludes the video. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments and please subscribe. I look forward to your comments.